In a fairly recent video, I took a look at this little keychain flashlight, a pink version of this, which doesn't just have the normal LED in the front, but it has the LEDs on the side for extra features. And it was quite interesting construction. It's worth mentioning the lithium cell in this tested at 200 milliamp hour. This is the Big Daddy. This is the EDC flashlight model V3. 900 lumens, can't really test that. Includes a battery, which is built-in battery, which is nice because it is rechargeable. And uh, the battery, it claims, is 500 milliamp hour. When we take a look at this one, it's got a sort of similar vibe to it. It's got the charging lead, it's got the little keychain clip, and then it's got the light itself. Let's put this out of the way. And then zoom down so we can see this better. I shall just shove that over there. So I shall show you the modes this has. The USB charging port in the back, there is the 500 milliamp hour cell in the back. It does look quite sizable. This is good. So it has a super turbo mode. If you press and hold, it's got two buttons, one with a lightning bolt on it and one with a power button symbol. And if you press and hold the power button symbol, it goes to super turbo mode, but only briefly. And it's just as well, because it is driving LEDs hard. I can feel the heat from the light coming off that. But if you press it um, double, twice, it goes into the first of the normal modes, which is continuous, which is the high level. Then you press it again, it goes to medium level, low level, and then just super low level for extra long battery life when things are desperate, uh, and then goes back to the high level. If you want to turn it off, you press and hold. This is one of these things about these, because they've got so much functionality just in a couple of buttons, it becomes a bit cryptic how to use them. The same applies to this here. If you press the button briefly, it does give you a battery indication and just lights the little light on the side. But if you double click it, it goes into flashing red mode. How useful. Uh, click it again. It goes into police mode. That's also a bit tricky. Then useful white mode. And then ultraviolet mode. And it's not bad. You can actually see the red phosphor growing for that one. And then it goes back to the start of that. To turn it off, you double click it again. No, you actually press and hold it. See, that's what I mean. It's so complicated. Anyway, how does this come apart? That's what we want to know. Is it glued together? This is unscrewing. This one's unscrewing. Is this going to be a clamshell type arrangement? Or are there going to be screws? There can be lenses. Well, there's a little uh, ceiling glass grommet there. Is it going to peel apart at this? I'm not sure how this comes apart. I may have to pause. Oh, you know what? I have a horrible feeling it's going to be destructive because I'm seeing a difference in colour between the front assembly and the uh, the body of it. So I'm wondering if it slides out, but that is physically clicked in the end. Um, I shall try. I shall do what I can. These lenses aren't coming out. Where's the spudger? Let's see how destructive this gets. I'll destroy mine so you don't have to destroy yours. No, that's not, not working, is it? So is this... Oh, it is. Mmm. Is it scrunching? It's scrunching slightly. That's the side of the lithium cell. Maybe I shouldn't be stabbing it in there. The spudger is definitely getting in there, but I think it's glued. I think it's going to be very destructive. Yeah, you're going to basically watch... An expensive little light. Well, it's not super expensive. It's not as expensive as the original. I think this is going to be very destructive. And this is not going to go together again afterwards. No, nope, I think I'm going to have to grab... If this gets too long, I shall just pause. Let's try grabbing it and opening it like a vape. Well, that's promising. The lenses are coming out now. Yeah, opening it like a vape might be the way to do it. Ah, here we go. So that's how you do it. Grab it with the pliers and pull it off. Now we've got this to get out. Grab it with the pliers on the other side of that little bit of circuit board. Well, let's pull the little rubber bung out of the USB-C port, and then I'll try and just drag this out without shorting anything excessively. Oh, is this going to work? Hold on. Is this going to be trapped by these switches again? Because the previous one was... Or do these come out separately? Lots of flashing lights. These buttons are kind of captive. But am I going to be able to use... If I lift these out... This is not how you're supposed to take this apart. I don't think you're supposed to take it apart at all.
but that's okay. This channel is all about taking things apart. Let's see if we can push it out by getting a screwdriver behind the switches and pushing. No. That's not going out either. Have, is there something I don't know about? Is there a little carrier? Maybe this magnet hides a screw or something. I think I'm going to have to pause and I'll let you know how it came out afterwards. One moment, please. And resume. It turns out that I just uh, didn't try hard enough, clearly, getting this out. It does just slide out. I looked at the back with a flashlight to see if I could see a screw in there. There wasn't a screw. So all I did was, since I'd lifted the buttons up already... I got a screwdriver and just gently pushed the switch again and the circuit board slid out. Once it has slid out, there is a wrap, basically a sticky label, it's not at the back taken off, that is literally just put round like this to give it a nice sort of image inside the case. And that comes off to reveal the 500 milliamp power cell, which is stuck onto the back of this with a bit of tape. And it is uh, marked 500 milliamp power. It is a 602535, six millimeters thick, 25 millimeter wide by 35 millimeter long and it taps on to a couple of connections here um, and there's this sticky pad to hold it in place it sandwiches right between the hot leds but but with a bit of space and the connector itself it's quite a snug fit it's worth mentioning the battery itself has protection on it um, the circuitry itself oh also worth mentioning before i go into the circuitry the LED circuit board on the end has heat dissipation rings around the LEDs and when it's assembled, these little brass heat sinks are basically pressed onto those. The lenses go inside the heat sinks and there's little rubber O-rings that are pressed on by the outer metal cap that theoretically should make that fairly water resilient. But having said that, the seam around here where it just clips on is possibly going to wick water in. But anyway... Let's take a look at the circuitry. I shall zoom down this so we can explore it. The battery comes on in the back here and there is an A1SHB MOSFET as battery polarity protection. So that if you connect the battery the wrong way around it doesn't blow up the chip and stuff like that. Mainly to protect the chip I'm guessing and possibly the little charge chip. I guess maybe they've had an issue at the factory with them being swapped round. Not really sure. But uh, beyond that it's protected... Um, However, the one bit that isn't protected, the positive from the battery goes straight out to the LEDs, the high power LEDs, but not these ones over here. There is a LPS BMCH2 charge control chip, which has the identical pin out to a TP4057 with the programming resistor, a couple of capacitors. Uh, there's the USB port. There is no resistor arrangement to tell a smart charger to say put out power. So if the, this unit doesn't charge if you plug it into a smart charger plug it into a dumb charger and it should charge uh, the four leds each has its own transistor but no current limiting resistor each of these leds has two little chips inside it for power i guess and these are standard npn transistors with a 10k resistor to the base of each direct from the chip so potentially these transistors are acting as uh, resistors effectively, the limits of the current. But the current through each of these LEDs is roughly 100 milliamps. Uh, there's a chip, it gets its power supply with a little uh, 10 ohm resistor and capacitor to provide a, a filter, I'll show you that in the schematic. A couple of buttons, uh, indicator LED for charging status, and then the MOSFET, an A006, for switching the output LEDs, and it's got a 1K series resistor to the, the gate and a 10K pull down resistor for stability. Uh, what else can I mention here? Not much. Right, let's go on to the schematic, which, well, I've basically described it, haven't I? I'll give you the currents as well. Oh, I had to turn the power supply up quite a bit to get enough current. Let's see how I get even closer, because that, that can get closer. Birdsong outside, even though it's very early in the morning. Here's a USB supply. It uh, goes to the TP4057, or lookalike TP4057. It has a programming resistor with 2K7. So that's a fair low current. Uh, 300 milliamps or so, I'd guess, for that. And it's got a couple of decoupling capacitors either side. There's the uh, battery polarity protection uh, transistor, which has its gate tied to the zero volt rail. And the 
connection is a P channel, so the positive is actually tied up to the battery, and then that's down to the circuitry. It, it treats this as the negative side. And uh, what that means is if you connect the polarity of the battery the wrong way around, the, the MOSFET simply won't turn on, it won't be harmed. Um, it's very simple. But one connection of the battery is taken off, and it's taken over to, directly to the super high power LEDs. And by super high power, I mean scorching hot LEDs. There's a protection module on the battery itself. There's a little decoupling uh, circuit. There's a 10 ohm resistor and the capacitor, probably 100 nanofarad, could be wrong. Mystery chip, as they always are. And two signals come from the charge chip. Current sense, uh, the charge control uh, indication, it goes low to show it's charging. And uh, standby, S for standby. And that basically, when the... Uh, chip gets those signals, it switches these LEDs and flashes the red and then goes constant green just to show it's charged and it shows status indication and stuff like that. The two buttons go to the zero volt rail. Those LEDs just have one common 1K resistor. And then we've got four sections like this. The Y1 transistor going to the zero volt rail. The fairly high current uh, LED, the, these are the standard little ones down the side that are being run at 100 milliamps, which is monstrous. And uh, not help if they're in a smoky coloured case. That just seems so inefficient because it's going to attenuate the light output. It's like a neutral filter on them. But there's a 10K resistor going to the base of these transistors and that basically will limit the current to the base. And because the transistor multiplies that current, the traditional type of transistor, uh, it means that the LED is going to be... Current limited by this transistor, by the look of it. There's the MOSFET that's switching the output. It's an A006, 10K pull-down resistor, a 1K resistor from the chip, and then it drives the two LEDs with no resistors going straight to the battery positive connection. Um, so fairly straightforward. Now, currents. I took a little note of the currents. Uh, when you hold the button and it goes to super turbo mode, let me demonstrate super turbo mode. Hold the button. Super turbo mode, very bright. Uh, it's two amps. That's quite a lot at 4.2 volts. At the high setting, it was 660 milliamp, medium 140, low 67, and then the long run, the sort of basically speaking, if I turn it on to by double clicking it, that's the high, medium, low, and then super low current, just basically for low standby use, just for a very long battery runtime. That's 13 milliamps, so it's going to give a decent runtime off the batteries. Uh, all the other LEDs, uh, red flashing, it was 50-50 cycle, roughly 50 milliamps. The police is roughly alternating 50-50. So it was about 90 milliamps I measured. But basically speaking, to all intents and purposes, these LEDs here are all being driven at 100 milliamps. Uh, and that is it. Anything else worth saying about that? Not really. It's an interesting enough light. It's quite unusual. They've skimped, they've cheated with the uh, components by not putting resistors in series of LEDs. But having said that, they maybe they just thought, you know, well, might as well double up with these transistors. It's a bit of a haphazard way of regulating the current through them. And that is quite, you know, I'm guessing they just rely on the fact that the these LEDs, uh, uh, long press for turning off, these LEDs will have a fairly high forward voltage. Uh, or maybe the current, the battery itself will limit the current um, just when they're being run absolutely full on, all the rest of the intensity control is by pulse and modulation. So it's based on that sort of, you know, unlimited current just by the voltage across the LEDs going high and the circuit impedance. But that's it. It's an interesting little light. It's functional. It's got a decent capacity battery. I'm not sure how long the light, the LEDs would last running even at 600 milliamps. Um, because I suppose that's roughly, yeah, it's about one watt each, roughly. Um, but yeah, interesting little light. A generic look alike clone of others. It'd be interesting to take apart some of the decent quality ones. But that is it. Uh, interesting and worthy, chunky little light.